Our question three follows on from the previous question, um, but this time we're just dropping the stone and it falls vertically downwards and hits the sand. If you'd like to go have a go at plotting the velocity and acceleration, pause the video now. And here we go. So remember that in this question, downwards has been chosen as the positive direction. So here again, positive is downwards, negative is upwards. Positive is downwards, negative is upwards. Okay. So, and then also notice here, this is where we drop the stone and it falls and then it hits the sand there. So for that section of time, uh, in the vertical direction, we've only got the weight. So the acceleration will be 9.81, which is constant. So the gradient of this graph needs to be constant and a constant gradient looks like this. So from the start until it hits the sand, constant gradient. When it hits the sand, you've obviously still has its weight acting on it, but now it's got a massive upwards normal contact force from the ground. So that's the ground pushing upwards on the stone. That's what's going to slow it down. So the resultant force, upwards, acceleration, upwards. Now, on our graph, upwards is negative. So we need negative gradient now. They don't care how you draw this in because you don't know. You don't know if it's constant acceleration. You just know that it's upwards. So one way or another, you get the mark for drawing the velocity dropping back down to zero. And now for acceleration, well, we said constant acceleration until it hits the ground. So um, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm going to assume time of release is actually there again. So it's constant all the way until it hits the ground. Now, I don't have to put numbers on. It said numerical values not required, but just, just while we're here, so that it's 9.81 all the time until it hits the ground. And then we said resultant force upwards, and so acceleration upwards. So the acceleration has to be down here now. And again, you don't know what exact shape this is. So as long as you've got something below the axis, you get the mark. So constant positive acceleration until it hits the ground, and then negative acceleration until it reaches a standstill. This last bit, you don't need for the marks, but just to point out that the area under an acceleration time graph is equal to the change in velocity. So here's our SUVAT formula. And if I rearrange, we get that. So the A times T, that's this area here, and that is the change in velocity. So whatever velocity it gains falling, it then needs to lose in order to stop. And so actually, the if you're being really clever, your the area of these two shapes is the same. But you didn't need that for the full marks.